and you need to sign up. If you would sign up, we would appreciate that. I can just, I'm sorry, can I just interject? So after the game, they all the, the players, the pirate players that that uh, know the Lord or have faith in the Lord, will be speaking. So they'll come down front. We'll be in our in the stands, and they'll they'll testify about their faith. And then I think there's a concert. I'm not positive, but it's from four. We leave at probably two forty-five from the church here and get back probably around eight eight thirty. So it's a good time, not too late for anyone, so thank you. The other thing I want to mention to you also, the spring picnic is coming. That's not set. We're looking forward to doing that. And water baptism, I would encourage you to see me about water baptism. It really is an outward manifestation of an inward work. It will change you spiritually. Trust me to say that. It will change you when you get water baptized. The other thing, too, we want to mention, uh, uh, Bruce is not here. Yeah. Oh, there's Bruce. Would you want to stand up a minute, Bruce? This young man, Bruce, is uh, heading up what we have Bibles for prisoners. When you came in, if you noticed out in the front, there was a Bible for prisoners, and there's a table for different Bibles. And uh, anything you want to say about? Say, were there any condition, you know, any language also. If you have Bibles, you know, I... That would be good to do. And since, um, since Bruce is up, tomorrow is his birthday, so wish Bruce a happy birthday. <laughs> Somebody take that man to lunch or <laughs> let him take you to lunch or something like that. The kids leave after worship today, so we want to do that. So glad, appreciate that. Uh, and the Bible class is today at 1140, 1240. So if you get an opportunity to stay and listen to that, Judy is teaching anchored in the word, and it's so good. I mean, uh, let's give a, uh, not embarrass her, but how many know we're glad Lindell's here this morning? Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. You know, we have a great pastor. It wasn't without her. He'd still be in New Brighton, walking in the streets of 3rd Avenue. Glory to God. <laughs> so we're thankful. You ready? Go ahead. So back. Back to the pirate game. If you want to go on the 20th, just see Judy Galino. Uh, the money is due today. It's thirty dollars a person. It's down. The seats are down lower, so we don't have to be in peanut heaven. Thank you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. We welcome you to have your way. Bless this. Bless uh, the preaching of your word and give us, uh, may it fall on rich, good soil that produces much fruit in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone said, amen. Oh, let's come, let us worship.
Say it again. Him the sun sets free is free indeed. Thank you, Lord, that your truth sets us free, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Just go to thank him this morning. You're no longer deceived. Hallelujah. No longer in bondage. Amen. You might say, well, I'm just the least in the kingdom of heaven. There is no such thing as the least in the kingdom of heaven. You are connected to the head. You're his body. You are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. You are a joint heir with him. He's given you of his spirit, resurrection power on the inside. So I'm telling you today, God wants to build you up and let you know. He wants to edify you that you are his children. And he has given you promises, covenant promises. And you are just one prayer away from a miracle. Do you believe it today? Come on, praise him for it. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Let's praise him. Oh, we're still, still turning here. <laughs> I'll keep shouting. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. He's done so much for us. So, you know, I, I think 
man, he's done so much for me. I can't sit in that chair and not praise him. If he's done something for you, it'll show. Because you'll express it. Well, I'm just a quiet person. I just praise him on the inside. No. If he's done something for you, if he's saved you, he's filled you with the Holy Spirit, if he's healed your body, done a miracle in your life, you cannot but stand up and say, praise the Lord. I'm going to give him praise today. Glory to God.
Thank you, Lord. He is Abba Father, meaning Daddy God, reflecting a personal relationship with Him. And the Bible says He's not giving you a spirit of, a, of fear, but a spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba Father, Daddy God. So if you're battling a spirit of fear, get into that relationship, intimacy with Him. Call Him Abba of Daddy God. And it'll dispel and dismiss any fears in your life. Do you believe it today? Amen. He's a good God. The Bible says that the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's praise Him a little bit today. Shout unto God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's, uh, let's I feel led just to pray for uh, this young lady back here. Some of you come and help me pray for this young lady right here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's a sweetheart. Come on, lay hands on her right there. Father, thank you so much. Some of you ladies in faith too. Come on. Father, we bless you now. Thank you for your precious anointing pouring into her right now. Father, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. We thank you that that healing anointing is driving out any infection, anything that's not of you, anything that's under the curse, because you redeemed her from the curse. Thank you, Father, for raising her up in Jesus' name, making her whole. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lay hands on us. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, my Father. Oh, we bless you, Father. Thank you so much for your healing anointing. Yes. Wonderful, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'm so glad the Lord raised my wife up. Praise God. Aren't you glad she's here today? Getting stronger every day? Exercising? I'm her, her therapist. And so we do the, the exercises together every day. We didn't do them this morning, though. So, oh, you did some on your own today. Okay. Where did I see Linda? Avina? Linda, come here. Give me a 30 second, 30 second nugget of what you learned at that conference. Just 30 seconds. All right. One thing that stands out to you that you learned at that prayer conference. To pray unceasingly and to pray target prayers. Don't get all like shotgun prayers. Pray target prayers. Yes, very specific. You know God is for you. He's not against you. He loves every one of you. And he sees every one of you as a beautiful jewel. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> You are a beautiful jewel. Why? Because you have a treasure in that earthen vessel. Yes, you do. Glory to God. Say, everybody say, I have a treasure inside of me. The presence of God, His indwelling spirit. Thank you for it, Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, my Father. Glory be to God. You know what? We forgot. Brother, go back there and lay hands on uh, Penny. Some of you people. Get around Penny there. Lay hands on her. That's it. Go ahead. Thank you, Lord, for touching you right now in Jesus' name. Your supernatural power, Lord. Healing anointing. Oh, it's in this place right now. I sense a release of God's healing anointing in this place. Healing virtue right now in Jesus' name. Anybody that needs a touch of healing right now, lift your hand to heaven and say, Yes, Lord, I receive it. I receive that healing virtue right now in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Thank you, my Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. That healing anointing driving out everything that's not of you. Oh, the Bible says, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You know, Jesus had an inheritance, didn't he? He received an inheritance. He was the firstborn from the dead. And uh, guess what? You have part of that inheritance. You have, you have that inheritance as well. He's given it to you. You're an equal heir with Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Man, His presence is strong today. Do you notice that? Father, thank you for touching people. You're bringing peace to them, Lord, in Jesus' name. You're the Prince of Peace. We thank you. There's no peace like yours, Father. Oh, God, we enter into that rest right now. 
Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Isn't it something? You can go ahead and sit down. Jesus was in the back of that boat. Remember what he said first of all? He says, we're going to the other side. You remember that? Then he's in that boat and the storm rises. And it's the same storm that the disciples saw. And they said, oh my goodness, we're going to die. Now these are professional fishermen. They knew about the waters and the storms and everything else. And they said, we're going to die. That's how bad it was. But the same storm came on Jesus, didn't it? The same wind, the same waves. It all hit Jesus. And what was he doing? He went to sleep in the back of the boat. <laughs> he entered rest, didn't he? Now, I'm telling you, whatever storm is facing you, whatever catastrophe, whatever crisis you're engaged in right now, whatever hassle you have in your life right now, I'm telling you that you can go through the same storm and you can be at rest, just like Jesus was, sleeping in the back of the boat. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody say, I'm going to make it because God is in me. I'm an overcomer by faith in him. Come on, shout a little bit today. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Oh, quick testimony. Can you do it? 30 seconds? I don't agree. 30 seconds. Um, I just got so much to be thankful for. I put in a lot of hours at work. We're short-handed. That's why I can't be here a lot. But I thank God that he has given me a job and I have good employer, you know. Uh, Jimmy went to the doctors this week. As many of you may not know, he's a diabetic. He lost five toes to sugar diabetes. His sugar's good. His, everything's good. And she said, I don't know what you're doing. And he, she said, keep it up. And he goes, the only thing I'm doing, I'm trusting Jesus. We had the car inspected this week. There was metal sticking out of the tar. And the guy said, he don't know how we didn't wreck her. And Jimmy said, it was the Lord on our side. So. The angels. Hallelujah. Come on, let's rejoice. Woo. That's good. He verbalized to the doctor. It was the Lord. I'm trusting in the Lord. You know, when you get something from God, the Bible says in Revelation 12, 11, and he overcame them by the blood of the lamb and the what? And the word of their testimony. Go ahead and give testimony. Glorify God verbally and tell people what he's done for you. And that'll help seal it so that you can maintain what you've obtained. Do you believe it today? Glory to God. Well, ushers, come and help me if you would. I'm going to pass out these. Some more, not propaganda. It's uh, things that are going on. By the way, this is from Matt Staver of the Liberty Council. And tells a lot of stuff that's going on in the news and how, what we can do to pray to overcome that. Thank God for intercessors. Yes. Make sure everybody gets one of those. Don't read them now during my sermon. That will make me feel bad. So you wait till after the service and read it. All right. <laughs> Okay. Hey, we want to encourage all of you to sign up and vote. Be sure to vote in the primaries, May 16th primaries. Very important. And uh, school board members are going to be voted on. And you know what? We need to get good conservative school board members in, right? You need to ask them, are you a liberal, a moderate, or conservative? Find out what they believe in and then vote accordingly. Because this is, it goes beyond the political. It goes into biblical issues what they're going to put on the shelves in the schools. Is it going to be porn? Is it going to be some LGBT thing? Is it going to be same-sex homosexuality? Listen, I'm not a homophobe or I'm not a transphobe. All right? Let's set the record straight. But we don't want that stuff indoctrinating and corrupting our children. Isn't that right? So be sure to vote for the right school board people coming up. And listen, if you want to, to know uh, how to vote and so forth, you can go to this website. Here it is right here. G-O, no, Beaver, well, for me, it's Beaver County. Beaver County, G-O-P, dot com. Beaver County, G-O-P, dot com. And that'll tell you, give you the information on each one of these people. Amen? Hallelujah. And they're encouraging us this year to do mail-in ballots. It says, we're, they said that we're winning at the polls but we are losing in this area of mail-in ballots. 
So we need to get on the stick and do what the what the opposition's doing and do mail-in ballots this year. So that's very important from what I understand. Lots of crazy things going out there. Do you know that Planned Parenthood this year, this past 2022, they raked in $1.9 billion with a B dollars for killing babies. $1.9 billion and and of that, $647 million were donated through taxpayer funding. Our taxpayer dollars went toward that. So we're going to do everything we can to speak up and let people know that we want to defund Planned Parenthood. Do you agree with that today? Amen. Hallelujah. When you think about it, it's not, it's not even a battle of so much against good and bad, but it's a battle between life and death. When you think about it, right? Things that are going on, it's either life or death. He says, I called a record this day, heaven and earth. Choose you life or choose you death. And then he went on to give him a hint. He said, choose life. And so we got everything we do, we need to examine it. Is, is this for life or is this going to produce death? Amen. Well, let's go ahead and give this to you. And by the way, I wanted to just, we sent a check to Think Missions, but I feel uh, to just maybe take a minute today. Uh, Pat Summers, who is D. Summers' son and Leanne's brother, is involved in missionary endeavors called Think Missions. And they go down into Bolivia. They're going to build a new church in Bolivia. Uh, they go into Cuba. And they're going to bring relief supplies and Bibles and evangelists and church planting down in Cuba. They've already done much of that. Many, many churches established through them in Cuba. In Nepal... They want to purchase land to build a Bible school and human trafficking rescue center. They've rescued many, many children from human trafficking. Northern India, uh, they want to build a Bible school. Oh, by the way, here's one about the trafficking. The, the 27 girls in a brand new six-month residential human trafficking program that they pulled out of the, off of the streets. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Uh, they want to minister to... 35 girls in the six-month residential human trafficking program. Uh, they're going to start micro-businesses to help poor families and pastors in, in these communities. So all these different countries they're going into. So let's do this this morning. Let's take up an offering for them. And uh, we'll do, just all you need to do is write on it, Think Missions. Think Missions. And write Word Alive Church on your check, but... On your envelope this morning, just beside the amount that you want to sow into that, just write Think Missions, okay? That's the name of his endeavor, but we'll give him one big check from our church, all right? We already sent him one here recently. We'll send him another. He's doing a good work down there. All right, you ready to give? Brother James, come on up here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dear Lord, we just thank you for these tithes and offerings. We ask you to use it for your glory to spread the good news of the gospel. We ask to give your like. The Lord bless, think, mission. Do a, bless them more exceedingly, abundantly, more than they could ever ask or think. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's praise him.
we're not cessationists. We're not people who believe that the power left with the last apostle. No, we believe that the power of God is still relevant today, still alive. He's still doing miracles, still with resurrection power, touching people, healing people, touching the lame to walk, the blind to see, and the deaf to hear. Amen. Right now, if you're having a hearing problem, just stick your finger in your ear and say, Thank you, Father. I believe right now for you to open my ears in Jesus' name. Spirit of deafness, get out of here. Go from me now. I speak life, health, restoration to my hearing right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I believe for improvement. Believe to see it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They examined my hearing, and they said I had 83% in this one and 93% in this one. So uh, I'm believing the 83 over here to come up to 93 to match this one. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Well, let's give someone a fist bump there and tell them Jesus loves you. Oh, I wanted to correct one thing. Go ahead and sit down. Uh, I mentioned in my message on uh, Wednesday night that it just came out. It was, I think it was something I was teaching, and I mentioned that... Uh, we lose 25% bone mass. No, that's not correct. You lose 7% bone mass, muscle mass, excuse me, 7% muscle mass for every day that you're in the hospital or that you're down. And that's what we're getting back into my wife. Hallelujah, good muscle mass. But instead of 25, it's only 7%. I like to correct if I make a mistake. <laughs> and I don't know if I said Minnesota's where they were doing that bill, 5599, but it's actually the state of Washington, state of Washington. Did I say Washington? Good. See, I, I don't remember what I said. Okay. <laughs> hey, and I just want to congratulate you folks. There were $3,000 that you sowed into Turkey, into the proliferation of the gospel in Turkey through Larry Mills so that they could go back and rebuild their ministry, rebuild their coffee house and so forth. And that is commendable, $3,000. Come on, let's praise the Lord for that. He provides, doesn't he? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I'm going to switch over into this mic over here. That is a nation of 88 million people, and there are only 6,000 believers in that nation. So that's 99.9% .9 Muslim. But things are changing because God's over there, because God's moving. Amen. He's got His people on hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Well, turn in your Bibles, if you would, to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm beginning with verse... 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 4. Thank you, Father, for this word today. We love you. We thank you so much for your anointing. And Father, we just love your word. We just love to take it in. We love to meditate it. We love to study your word, Father, because it's your word. It's life to those who find it, and health and medicine to all their flesh. And your words are spirit, and they are life. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, first of all, let me give you a little something to make you smile. How's that? Uh, you can be looking for 2 Corinthians 5. An atheist professor was teaching a, a college class, and he told the class that he was going to prove that there was not a God. He said, God, <clears throat> if you are real, then I want you to knock me off this platform. I'll give you 15 minutes. Ten minutes went by. He kept taunting God, saying, I am, here I am, God. I'm still waiting. He got down to the last couple of minutes. And a big 240-pound football player walked to the, happened to walk by the door and heard what the professor said. The football player walked in the classroom, and in the last minute, he walked up, hit the professor full force, and sent him flying off the platform. The professor got up, obviously shaken, and said, where did you come from? He says, and why did you do that? The football player said, God was busy, and he sent me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 4? It says, Our bodies, our dying bodies, make us groan and sigh. But it's not what we want to die, not that we want to die and have no bodies at all. We want to slip into our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by everlasting life. By the way, do you realize that you're going to live forever? I said, you're going to live forever. <clears throat> Think about that. 
Because of Jesus' life and nature on the inside of you, you have everlasting life, meaning you're going to live forever. Now, you might die physically, but your spirit and soul are going to live forever. It says in Ecclesiastes, the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Glory to God. You got that to look forward to, don't you? God himself has prepared us for this, and as a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. As a guarantee. Now we're in the King James. It says, as a, 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 an earnest of the Spirit. An earnest of the Spirit. In other words, that's a, it says in the literal Greek, it's a down payment for the future. The Holy Spirit in you is a down payment on something in the future. Do you know what that is? The rapture of the church. The marriage supper of the Lamb. The Bema seat, that you're going to be present there. And so the Holy Spirit is a down payment and earnest of the Spirit for you and me that shows that someday we're going to have a full reward. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. That is why we live by believing and not by seeing. We live by believing and not by seeing. The King James says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. That means when we walk by faith and not by sight, we put our focus on God's Word and everything else is subordinate to that. That means the circumstances, the situations of life, the, the ridicule, the persecution, all these things are just subordinate to the focus on God's Word. And as you stay focused on Him, He will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on Him. Amen. 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 And you can walk by faith and see great things happen. So you don't want to let the wind and the waves and so forth distract you from that. Just like Peter focused on Jesus, but then he got distracted a little bit. And he went blub, blub, blub. He went down, didn't he? So, walking by faith and not by sight. And when you do that, see, a lot of good, good things are going to happen. Oh, oh, thank you, Father. You're going to walk in peace. You're going to be a catalyst for miracles and healings. We're going to find out a little bit later that when you're walking by faith and not by sight, it's going to keep you in perfect peace and rest. You'll enter into God's rest. But all in all, when you walk by faith and not by sight, you're going to be an overcomer. Because the Bible says in Romans and uh, 1 John 5, 4, it says, Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith. I said, what's it like to walk by faith? <clears throat> well, I got a real example of that when I became a pilot, and particularly after I got my private pilot's license, and then I got into, I got a commercial rating, and then I got an instrument rating. Well, instrument rating enables you to fly in the clouds. See, a pilot is not allowed to fly in the clouds unless he's instrument rated. We call that IFR flight rules, instrument flight rules, IFR, okay? <clears throat> That's basically enabling you to fly, and you have a rating that you can fly into the clouds. It's a whole different ballgame. Now, VFR flying is visual flight rules, and that's just flying in good weather, okay? <clears throat> visual flight rules. So now, to get the, to kind of graduate to that instrument ra rating, they train you for that <clears throat> because when you go into the clouds, you your vertigo takes over, and you feel like you're falling and so forth, and you don't know what to trust, and you got to trust the instruments. So what they get you to do to trust the instruments is, they, now they don't do this anymore. I'm an old pilot. But they used to give you what they call fog goals. Now you notice <coughs> these glasses are all fogged up up here, but down here you can, in this little place here you can see. You see that? These are fogged up. That's why I call them fog goals. And then you got this clear place here. Well, you put these on like this, see, and you can't see out of the airplane. All you can see are the instruments. And, I mean, the training that they give you, they even make you take off using the instruments, going down the runway, watching the heading and keeping it and so forth. And, and then so that when you fly into the clouds, you will not 
rely on your senses because they'll, they'll, they'll give you wrong feedback. Then your vertical will take over. Vertigo will take over. So, <clears throat> now you could cheat if you wanted while you're training and go like that, but I didn't do that. Anyhow, this is what they use <clears throat> so that you can fly in bad weather. And I, I remember uh, just one example. We took a flight to see her relatives down in Harrisburg, and we landed at Capital City Airport. And we had little kids, and, and one of our little kids got loose from us and ran through the lobby of the airport and, and knocked over a, a big cardboard statue of Don Meredith, the quarterback. How many remember that? Okay, that was many years, moons ago, wasn't it, honey? We caught him, and then we couldn't get the, the cardboard thing put back together. But anyhow, <laughs> but anyhow, to get home, we had to file an instrument flight plan. We were flying a Cherokee 180 and had my family in the airplane. And so we had to take off, and <clears throat> probably about 1,800 feet, we flew right into the clouds, and so we're flying through a cloud layer now, climbing to 10,000 feet, and we broke out of the clouds on top, and it's nice, beautiful, sunny weather up there on top. You couldn't see any ground because there's this cloud layer, but we're flying at 10,000 feet, and <clears throat> uh, the whole time you're talking to the air traffic control. What you're doing is focusing on your instruments when you go through those clouds so that you don't, you know, vertigo take over and so forth. But then you get 10,000 feet, you're just cruising along there, nice, and then you get back close to home, and the air traffic control says, all right, now you can begin to descent, descend to 7,000, so it's okay. Cessna uh, 7766 whiskey, that was a tail number on the airplane. I don't drink whiskey, but anyhow. By the way, how many of you know you don't need that to take the edge Amen. off of life? Amen. People say, well, I need alcohol to take the edge Amen. off of life. No, Jesus will take the edge off of life. Amen. <laughs> it's true. Amen. He said, how many know he's a jealous God? Yes, he, he wants you to pray in the Holy Ghost. He wants you to get, take the edge off of life by getting drunk in the Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. By getting on fire for him. Come on now. Amen. Anyhow. See, I can preach on a tail number of an airplane. The <laughs> seven seven six six whiskey. Okay. But anyhow, out of ten thousand to, to seven thousand. So we did, now we're back in the clouds. Now we're coming down. And now then we broke out of the clouds, and there we could see again. And then we went on and landed. That's just one example. So you see how you have to really focus on the instruments and trust the instruments and not, as they say, don't fly by the seat of your pants. Don't, don't rely on your senses or anything else. You, you rely on the, you trust those instruments. Even if you feel you're upside down, no, trust the instruments. What do they say? So anyhow, <clears throat> there's a similarity to walking by faith, isn't there? Because when you're walking by faith, you can't rely on your circumstances. You can't rely on the situations around you. You can't even rely on the sense evidence. If God says I'm healed, I'm healed, Right? Well, I feel, still feel some symptoms. Well, I'm healed because of the stripes of Jesus. I believe that I receive, all right? Let's put it that, that way. That way you're not really lying. You just say, I believe I receive my healing, right? So, so we focus on the Word no matter what's going on. And the other part of that was, as I told you, I was talking to air traffic control the whole time while you're in, on instruments. And you're, they're talking to you. Every so often they'll call you back up and they'll tell you, okay, you know, change frequencies and go to the next sector or what have you. And, or they'll tell you, like I said, to de descend and so forth. And uh, so it's kind of like listening to the Holy Spirit. Do you know the Holy Spirit wants to give you the right vector? You know, vector is a heading, you know. Descend and maintain 7,000. Turn right heading 210 and squawk 1570 on your transponder, whatever. And, and the Holy, and see the air traffic control will tell you that, and then you, you begin to, uh, you, you plug that in, see? And so those two things, you're focused on, on the instruments, and you're listening to the air traffic controller. Well, that's likened to li focusing on the Bible and listening to the Holy Spirit. I brought these along, too. This is a headset that you use. So put these on like this. And you just got a little microphone here, so you, so you talk to them, and okay. 
I'm going to turn left heading 210 and squat 1570, whatever, descend to maintain 7000. So you, <coughs> that's how, you, that's very similar to how we operate with God. We focus on His Word and we listen to the Holy Spirit. And how many of you know that that's going to produce success? That's going to produce prosperity. You say, well, I don't know if I believe in prosperity. Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever been saved? Amen. Have you ever been filled with the Holy Spirit? Amen. Have you ever been healed? Amen. Or had, had a miracle done? Amen. Then you've prospered, right? Isn't that prosperity? Sure. Amen. So God wants you to prosper. And if you'll uh, listen to that and walk by faith and, and not by sight, you know what? He'll lead us into the covenant promises because you've got the earnest of the Spirit, who said us a minute, a minute ago. And by the way, the Holy Spirit is the very breath of God. Did you know that? That's right. The Holy Spirit is the very breath of God. Adam, there was Adam, uh, who was nothing more than a sandcastle man, right? Dust of the earth. And God formed him. And then it says he breathed into him the breath of life. And he became a living soul. And... So here is God's life in Adam. And so his life is in you now at the new birth. It's called Zoe life. That's the Greek word, Zoe, Z-O-E, and it's in you. And see, on the day of Pentecost, what happened? God breathed his life into people in the upper room, didn't he? Amen. He breathed into them. And the Bible says that they're all together in one accord in one place, and they heard, as it were, a sound, the sound of a rushing, mighty wind. Whew, what was that? The breath of God. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Amen. Glory to God. That was the breath of God. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God. Do you believe that today? Hallelujah. So how do we walk by faith? We walk by focusing on the Word. See, isn't that what Abraham had to do when he was old and decrepit and, well, not decrepit, but, I mean, he, he was beyond the, he, he couldn't produce any children, and, and Sarah the same way. She was beyond the childbearing years. And the, and the Bible says that Abraham, against hope, believed in hope. How could he do that? Because he was fully, he goes on to say, he was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. What God had promised, where did he promise it? To you and me in his word. His covenant promises. What God had promised, he was also able to perform. So what did Abraham do? He focused on the word. He refused to be distracted by the elements of the world, right? He focused on the word. And believe in what God had promised. And that's how we will operate by faith too. Is by believing what God has said in His Word. Glory be to God. And so when you think about the 12 spies that went in to spy out Kadesh Barnea in Numbers chapter 13 and 14. They went in and, and uh, they, well you know, two spies came back and said we're well able to go in and possess the land. Because God's already given it to us. God already spoke it and said, this land is yours. Go get it. The ten spies said, no, we, we can't do that. These men are like giants in this land. And we are as grasshoppers in their sight. And no, we can't go in there and possess that land. And it said that they made the heart of the people melt. But you see, why was it called an evil report? It was an evil report because it contradicted God's word. God had already told them, it's yours. Go get it. Right? Anything that contradicts God's word is an evil report. Amen. Amen. Maybe the doctor gives you a bad diagnosis. You say, okay, doc, thank you for that. And you go away and you say, thank you, Father. I believe that I received my healing. I believe that that's a man's report, a scientific report. But thank you, Father. There's a greater truth. And that's you, your truth, your word, Father. And you said, by his stripes, I was healed. I'm going to stick with that, Father. I'm going to focus on that. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? And so they said, we are well able to go up at once. Everybody say at once. <laughs> that doesn't mean wait six months and go. When God gives you the green light, go. Because he's given it to you, right? So you can, now you think about these 12 spies. Everybody knows Joshua and Caleb. The two champions, the two 
people that had what? A spirit of faith. We remember them. Right? Just like you remember. How many like watch the pirates? You like to watch the pirates? You remember. Brian Reynolds. I remember that. He's got a good last name. Uh, <laughs> uh, Key Brian Hayes. McCutcheon. Cutch. Right? We remember the ones that are faith champions. They're winners, right? But how many remember the names of the ten spies who were in fear? Nobody remembers them, their names, do they? So you want to be remembered? <laughs> Walk by faith and not by sight, right? Hallelujah. And they said, we're well able to go in and possess the land. Well, those uh, ten spies, what came out of their mouth? What was in their heart? The Bible says in, proper, in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, what's in your heart is going to come out of your mouth. And so sometimes we give ourselves away and we, and we find out, whoa, where that person is, right? By what they're saying. Sure. So <clears throat> the ten spies, we see, oh, by the way, Joshua and Caleb said this too. They said, their protection is gone from them. He said, their protection, the enemy, even though they had giants in the land, their protection is gone from them. That's the attitude that, that they had based on what God said, while the ten spies said, we're not well able to go in and possess the land. No, those giants are too big, right? And so they had a mentality of a grasshopper. Remember, it says, we are as grasshoppers in their sight. You remember that? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, listen, you know there's a lot of ungodly people today that are influencing our governmental leaders. But you know what? Their protection is gone from them. Because they've gone too far. They've overstepped their bounds. They've overplayed their hand. And God's, and even some of the sinners are calling them out for their ungodly choices. Isn't that right? Calling them out for their wickedness. And I told you about that bill uh, up in the uh, state of Washington, uh, SB 5599, which wants to allow, if you have a 13-year-old child and they want to change from being a man, a boy to a girl, then the, the, the school will go ahead and help them do that without your knowledge as a parent. And so they want to, and then if they give them treatment and so forth and take them away somewhere, they're not allowed to tell the parents where the child is. I mean, that is absolutely ludicrous. And that was passed the State House and the State Senate, and it's on the desk of Governor Inslee, and we got to pray. How many believe if we intercede, the governor will not sign that bill? Hallelujah. Have anybody heard anything about that yet? Okay, but that's, anyhow, it's on his desk for signing, and I'm, uh, we are praying. Intercessors, let's go to work. Amen. Amen. And uh, we're, we're going to cause that to fizzle, right? Hallelujah. Their protection has been removed. Amen. The devil's gone too far. Amen. Amen. The church is still here and we still have dominion. We have resurrection power in us and we're not going under for going over. We have authority over demons, looters, shooters, and evil perpetrators. <laughs> Glory to God. So the people were influenced by the ten spies. Joshua and Caleb knew they were in the natural, outnumbered five to one. And they stood alone. And they dug their heels in and refused to budge. How many of you know today there are situations that are in the news that we're going to have to stand alone and not budge? Because the majority is not always right. Do you believe it? Amen. In this case, the majority was not, all, was not right. Amen. God was right. And, and Joshua and Caleb were right. And so... I mean, you, you have these people that want to uh, be pandemic alarmists. But I think to myself, when Jesus came to the ten lepers, did he say, well, I'm going to call the contact tracing disease hotline on my cell phone and find out if it's okay to get near these lepers? No, he didn't do that, did he? No, he didn't get a, 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 some hand sanitizer and after he laid hands on them and, and prayed over them, did he? No, he didn't use that. He told them to just go show yourself to the priest. And what happened? One leper came back and ten and nine forgot to come back and thank him. Well, they all got cleansed, but one, the one that came back was made whole. 
In other words, his extremities and his ears and his fingertips, his toes, all of that was restored to normal. But the other nine, they were cleansed, but it doesn't say anything about them being restored and made whole. So listen, the Holy Spirit lives in you and he will keep you safe. The Bible says in Romans 8, 11, that if that same spirit Amen. that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he will what? Quicken your mortal body. Amen. Glory to God. Are you excited about that today? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo! Quicken, make alive your mortal body. You say, Pastor, you sound like a super spreader. I am. I'm a super spreader of the gospel. Glory to God. Disseminating the gospel. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's go over there to Hebrews chapter thir- 3. Hebrews chapter 3. Because we're going to get into a little something here. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 4. Are you ready? In verse 17. No, chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 17. But with whom, this is 317 of Hebrews. With whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Forty years they wandered around in the wilderness. By the way, do you know in the book of Deuteronomy, it tells us that it was only an 11-day journey? An 11-day journey. But it took them 40 years wandering around in that wilderness because they didn't have the direction of the blessing of God. They were they're operating on an evil report. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Amen. Unbelief. In the literal Greek, it means unpersuadableness. They were unwilling to rely and to trust on God. And that's what it takes when you're walking by faith and not by sight. I'm not talking about doing something foolish now, but I'm talking about keeping your focus on the Word of God no matter what you're going through. Amen? Amen. And not, like I said Wednesday night, not looking to any person's experience. Well, that person didn't make it. You know, they started a business and applied godly principles and they didn't make it in their business. No, no, don't look at that. You look at the Word of God. It says, any good thing a man doeth the same shall he receive of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And don't look, well, that person didn't quite make it in their, in their health situation. Stop looking at someone's experience and start looking at the Word of God. Amen. Do you believe it today? And stop looking to the tradition, to religion that gives you wrong thoughts and wrong ideas. We've got to stick with the Word. Isn't that right? Amen. Come on now. Okay, chapter 4, it says, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left of us entering into his rest. Any of you should come to short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. When you believe, you can enter into my rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although they, the works were finished from the foundations of the world. So we can enter God's rest when we'll trust in Him and we'll believe in Him and we'll rely on Him with all of our hearts and lean not to our own understanding. Amen. So, Oh, you know what? While we're in Hebrews, go over to chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. And look at verse uh, 39. Hebrews 10, 39. It says, But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. God does not want us to draw back in the face of the, the woke, demonized culture that's out there. He does not want us to draw back when they're trying to put pornography in our school libraries whenever they're trying to indoctrinate and corrupt our children with uh, putting same-sex books in and, and LGBT books in the libraries. No, we're not to draw back. No, we're, we might be standing alone, but He wants you to speak forth. Amen? Amen. Amen. And speak out against these things. Amen. We are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but to them that believe to the saving of the soul. Verse 38, go backwards. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Verse 35, cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. How many know that confidence brings a great recompense of reward? And you can enter into God's rest. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 
We must know who we are, the authority that we have, and the fact that God has deputized every one of you as His ambassadors, as His representatives on this earth. To the ministry of reconciliation. And listen, as long as we are still here, do you know that we are the great restrainer? I said, you are the great restrainer. The church. The ecclesia. We hold back sin. And degradation in this earth. Do you know that over there in Ukraine, there are 1,300 charismatic churches in Ukraine. What do you think it is holding back the Russians from a full conquest of Ukraine? It's the prayers of the saints. I'm telling you right now. Yeah, and those people fighting, I realize that. But the, it's holding back the complete takeover of that country. Holding back the Russian army. On fire churches like this one not dead ones now, Amen. are the restraining force. It's a tool in God's hands to hold back the enemy from just going all out, you know, all over the world. Minimizing perversion, and drag queen influence, and LGBT, socialist, and communist agenda that's trying to subvert and indoctrinate our children. But every time the devil tries to raise his ugly head, Christians pop up and say, No, devil, you're not doing it. Amen. We stop you in your tracks. You have neither blot nor part in this matter. Amen. You remember that was in the scriptures there in Acts chapter 8, where Simon saw all those people get filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. And he, he said, I want that power too. Here, I'll give you money for it. Yeah. And they, what did the disciples say? Hey, buddy, you have neither part nor lot in this matter. Be gone with you, right? That's in Acts chapter 8, verse 17 to 21. He heard the Samaritans get filled with the Holy Ghost and speak in other tongues. And he offered money. He wanted that power. And he couldn't, you know, but he, he, was, he couldn't get it. So you, you and I can say the same thing. Listen, partner, you have neither part nor lot in this matter. And that's what we say whenever a high school coach wants to pray with his team after the game down on the field and they try to then they did fire him for a while but he got reinstated and uh, got put back in there thank God for Christian groups that are doing that Christian groups like uh, John Whitehead and the Rutherford Institute he's a, he's a, a, an attorney and then you got uh, Matt Staver and the Liberty Council we just passed some things out to you today by Matt about Matt Staver and the Alliance Defending Freedom. Listen, if you ever get caught in a situation where you're being persecuted for righteousness sake, you can go to one of these groups and they will defend you in court. <clears throat> They've had many, many victories. Uh, Pennsylvania Family Institute, Mike Gear and Wendell Regner. My wife and I met both of them, talked with them. Uh, the Judicial Watch, the ACLJ. I didn't say the ACLU, I said the ACLJ and J. Seculo is another Christian group that will go to help defend Christians who are being persecuted for righteousness' sake and trying to infringe on their religious freedoms. And so we say no to the devil. You have near, neither part nor lot in these matters of Christian freedom. These are Christian attorneys. And so, you see, you and I are part of what's called the great restrainer. You say, where is that in the Bible? Go over to second. Well, you can look at it sometime for the sake of the time. It's in Second Thessalonians chapter two. It talks about he that now lets will let until him he that is taken out of the way. Well, the, that's talking about you and me being taken out of the way in the rapture of the church. And when that's done, when we're gone, then all hell breaks loose. And that's when the tribulation occurs. You see, and so in the meantime, though. You think it's the law enforcement that's holding back uh, widespread drug use in this nation? I mean, it's bad enough right now, but you, it's going to be even worse when we're gone. Why? Because we're the great restrainer. Amen? You think crime is uncontrolled now? Wait, wait till we're gone. Wait till the great restrainers are gone, and it's really going to get bad. Without the church, sin and evil would be even more pervasive, but, but the church says no to these evil forces. Why? Because we're representatives of God and we've been given authority to stop demonic spirits. Amen. This very weekend 
It was one of the largest satanic gatherings there ever was in Boston, Massachusetts. Satanists getting together. But thank God the intercessors for America are there too. And other intercessors, Christian people who are praying to what? To confound the enemy and get them all mixed up and get them <laughs> distracted. Thank God. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo! And to mitigate the efforts of those uh, evil, evil forces to bring confusion to the enemy's camp. And to enforce the devil's defeat. You know over there in James chapter 4 it says. Submit yourselves therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen. Now that's a promise. You have that kind of authority. Amen. Submit yourself unto God. You know by the way that's where we get the power to resist the enemy. Is by submitting ourselves unto God. It starts there. Then you have the power Amen. to resist the enemy and he will flee flee. Amen. How many believe that scripture is true? Yes. Hallelujah. So we, we can pray and when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can don the full armor of God and I'm telling when you have that full armor on you in Ephesians chapter 6, I'm telling you, you look like Jesus. The devil doesn't know the difference between you and Jesus. Amen. And you can put him on the run. Hallelujah. Amen. With the shield of faith, the sword Amen. of the Spirit. Glory, Glory to God. Woo! Ha <laughs> ha! Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we rise up and pull down those. We, we bind the forces of darkness and pull down those forces. And, and, and we rise up and speak up and pull those porn books and transgender uh, same-sex books off the library shelves. And, and uh, by the way, you know that the, the, the transgender thing is only zero point five percent of the population zero point five percent and here they're trying to influence the entire populace with this junk and you know whatever they want to do that's their business but please don't influence and corrupt our children are you listening to me and we have the authority to stop that and so we need to find out what's going on and then get involved in it. That's why we keep giving you these papers and then showing you what's, what's happening in the news from a Christian perspective and rise up so that we can, can overthrow them and, and ensure parental rights. You say, where do I get my parental rights? Right out of Proverbs 22, 6. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he'll not depart from it. Who's doing that? That's parents. That's called parental rights. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, let's stand this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Wonderful Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm saying enough is enough. Amen. Say that with me. Enough is enough. Amen. God's counting on us to speak up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's counting on us to come through on His behalf. David said in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 29, Is there a cause? Is there a cause? There is a cause. Once again, this isn't political. It's biblical issues that we're talking about. Right? Is there a cause? Is there a godly cause? In fact, that meant, in literal Hebrew, it means, aren't you fed up with this? Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. God's counting on the great restrainer in this last day to pray and defeat the enemy and force the enemy's defeat and to decree, proclaim, declare according to the word of God. Amen. You're to have dominion, praise God. You're to declare according to Job twenty-two twenty-eight. Decree a thing and it shall be established. Amen. And we need to keep decreeing. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. No, we don't have to accommodate a fraction of the population. Amen. Hallelujah. And then destroy competition in women's sports and Amen. so forth and so on. Amen. No, we're not going to let them no. influence and destroy this culture. We're not going to let them corrupt our children. Amen. We're going to speak Amen. up. We're going to pray up. Believers all over America are saying, yes, you're not going to shove this down our throats. Uh-uh, no. Amen. Believers are rising up to protect our children from goofed up spirits and drag queens and Amen. gender reassignment. Amen. I'm telling you, it's not gender reassignment surgery. It is body mutilation That's right. surgery is what it is. 
My goodness. So everybody say, I'm the restraining force. I'm, the restraining force. I'm filled with the power of God. I'm getting stronger all the time. Hallelujah. Now there's a song I heard here recently. I think it was Ted Shuttlesworth sang this song. It goes like, like this. There's a spirit of faith in the air. I can feel it right now everywhere. The Holy Ghost is moving. My future's improving. There's a spirit of faith in the air. <laughs> I like that. I wish I could sing it. I don't know the song well enough to sing it. But there is a spirit of faith in the air. And the Holy Ghost is moving. And my future is improving. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. I better run a little bit. Hallelujah. Whoops. Hang on to my mic. If you like. You can, anybody else wants to run? Go ahead. <laughs> Just run the same direction so we don't bang into each other. <laughs> Let's praise Him today. Listen, say this with me right now and mean it in your heart. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, am I am part of the great restraining, of the great restraining on, this earth. on this earth. I'm a child of God, child of God. filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Forgiven, forgiven, washed in the blood. Washed in the blood. Help, me Help me to walk by faith and not by sight. Not by sight. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name, give Him praise for it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, my Father. Let's praise Him. I'll be up here if you need prayer for anything this morning. Come on up. We ready? Go ahead.
great day, everybody. Trust the Lord. He's with you. Christ is my Yes, ma'am. 